Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and today I'm doing what if Naruto was half Otsutsuki and half Astro. Now if you don't know what being Astro means in this context, um, it's of course somebody from the Astro kind, but what that means is more explained in my other series, what if Naruto was from an Astro clan and had an ancient tailed beast. There I explain much more about you know, the connection of the Astral Clan to the whole Naruto series, and just things about the Astral Clan in general. This is a clan that I made up, by the way, so don't bother looking it up. It's not real. Anyways, let's get right into the first episode. But I actually do want to mention, if you want to see more things like this, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below what you liked about the video, and maybe, just maybe, join the Discord. Anyways, let's get into it. So this is basically an alternative story of how the war between the Astro and the Otsutsuki clan ended slash resulted. So in this story, instead of, you know, what happened in the other series, um, there is a child born that is half Otsutsuki and half Astro. And the special thing about this is that He's the son of the prince of the Astral Clan and the Atsutsuki princess, which not only combines the clans through blood, but also through royal lineage. This is a huge deal, and it single-handedly stopped the war at the very minimum. At first, had a ceasefire because this was a revelation that could change the entire war and how it would result. And it did. Naruto was highly regarded, by the way, that's his name, Naruto, was highly regarded by both the Astro Clan and the Otsutsuki Clan. Not just because he's royalty, but also because he's, you know, half of the other clan, which is. has never happened before, especially not as a royal. Anyways, after both clans being now convinced that they can actually harmonate as seen through the princess and the prince of both clans, they can live together happily in peace. Which is why, at least for now, the war efforts on both sides had stopped. Naruto was trained hard in case the war would ever threaten either clan ever again, Naruto would be there to protect them since he had the ability to learn the Otsutsuki and the Astral abilities, as well as both and all Dojutsu. This would make him extremely overpowered, and he would need multiple senseis for this. One from the Otsutsuki clan and one from the Astral clan, as you can see in the thumbnail. By the way, Naruto is the one in the middle, of course. Now, after having acquired incredible powers and strength, Naruto would travel the galaxy and search for other life forms. Not like the Otsutsuki had previously done to rob planets of their energy, and especially living life forms, but actually to solve conflict, to stop wars, as well as make relationships between all species in the galaxy to one day perhaps live in harmony interplanetary and interstellar. These were really big aspirations for anybody, but Naruto was willing to wait thousands of years until they are completed, which is why everyone admired him even more, since he did also have the strength to do so. He became a hero to all planets he visited especially his own two clans, until he one day stumbled upon Earth. He'd sensed some rather powerful chakra signatures that kept on battling for quite a while. They'd been keeping track on Earth for a while, and the Otsutsuki actually had some intel on it, since two of their soldiers that were ordered to conquer planets many years ago, 
Kaguya and Ishiki failed their mission and never returned, which is extremely surprising since the Otsutsuki are much more powerful than any human should be. So Naruto went to investigate since there was likely conflict amongst these humans, just like any other species. However, these actually had quite a bit of strength. When landing, Naruto and his two companions, which was two senseis by the way, that I mentioned earlier, sensed that every human, or well, not quite every human, but a lot of humans, had at least some form of DNA and heritage of Otsutsukis, especially speaking Kaguya. Not Ishiki though, which was weird. They didn't expect that, but it kind of makes sense. Not really though, there'd never really been a concept of Otsutsukis mating with others until Naruto arrived. Tsutsukis wanted to keep their bloodline, their bloodline pure, so there was never a question to mate with other species, except especially with species as weak as humans, since Otsutsukis valued strength over anything else. By the way, both of Naruto's senseis are really powerful, like stronger than Kaguya, much more powerful. But the reason they're not actually like fighting amongst Naruto is because they want him to learn and experience conflict and war. They're just there in case anything goes wrong, since he is royal. And if anything happened to him, another war might break out, which could be even worse than the first one. For some clearing up, by the way, the sensei on the left, the one clothed in white, is from the Otsutsuki clan, and the one in black is from the Astro clan. Now, though the one on the right does look frightening, he is a nice guy once you get to meet him. But anyways, back to Naruto, the main character of the story, of course. He is really overpowered in comparison to humans, since they need hand seals to make any type of jutsus. He doesn't. Also, he has dojutsus that they've never even heard of, since the Astral Clan is unknown to them. Anyways, Naruto and his two senseis make their way to the strongest and biggest chakra signature that's currently active, which is towards the south. Here they find a huge village amongst the woods, in, well, near a mountain range. range. Not really a mountain range, just a mountain with faces on it. However, currently there is a ginormous fox with nine tails that seems to be ravaging the forest. And the village is not able to keep up with the fox. Of course, we know this as a nine-tailed attack on Konoha, but Naruto is unaware. They transport to the fox in one swift move. And there they see a yellow-haired man fighting with all his might. They're pretty evenly matched, though the yellow-haired man, the human, is slowly exhausting himself, which is why he'll likely lose this battle. And since that yellow-haired man is probably the strongest in the village, Naruto wants to talk to him, which is why he quickly absorbs the nine-tailed fox, which he finds out is a huge chakra signature a few moments later, when he actually has Kurama inside of him. The human quickly walks over to Naruto and thanks him, but is also a little bit scared since he's seen many things that night. And Naruto does look rather different than a normal human, especially his astral sensei, which some humans might even describe as a devil looking creature. Anyways, after talking for like 30 seconds, Naruto gets a rough estimation of the situation, and Minato can be somewhat assured that they're not bad guys. So Minato goes over to his wife and her child, 
who are both lying slowly drifting into death not the baby but the wife and Minato thinks that there's nothing he can do anymore but Naruto with his gift of sharing but also taking life energy he can give some of his alien-like energy to Kushina to make her not just live but it makes her incredibly powerful much more powerful than she was before bigger chakras reserves more speed more intelligence it makes her incredible of course not quite as strong as minato but much stronger than she was before which is why naruto's skill is really useful if he ever has a team then he can fuel everybody up to make them even more powerful and of course he can do that to himself too but he always has some energy so it's not as powerful as it was for kushina since it's her first time experiencing something like that so she gets something similar to a zenkai boost minato and kushina both thank naruto and his two senseis but then quickly in a flash leave again to help the other villagers who might have been hurt and are still trapped in broken buildings and fires that have spread. Naruto quickly follows them, and of course Kushina took her baby, since she's not going to leave it in the middle of the woods. So, about five hours later, when everybody seems to be okay, Minato, as well as some of the village, village elders and the heads of clans, want to talk to Naruto, a mysterious man, but also child looking since as always but Satsuki and Astrolds look younger and age slower than humans so just putting it out there by the way Naruto is about 250 years old by this point so he has a fair share of experience but not human like experience so yeah what he knows as normal is very unusual for humans. They didn't even know that there was life outside of their own planet. They didn't even know how big their own planet was. Naruto is a little bit surprised since humans are pretty powerful but seem to lack intelligence. After a long discussion, of course Naruto reveals who he truly is. And he, reve he says that He's a prince of an alien species outside of the realm of imagination and that he's much stronger and older than they think. They're all very surprised, but they do accept his statement. For now, Naruto with his sensei can live in Konoha until further questioning. They are aware and there are a little bit scared of what Naruto could do but for now he's on their side which makes them happy although they will have to find out more about him to be sure Naruto a few days later when walking around the village as usual sees a different part of the village he went further than usual and is now at the edge of the village gates he sees a subsection of the village with a red and white mark on it. This is the Uchiha clan. And each one of them have a lot more chakra in their eyes, is what Naruto can sense. And they're rather gifted in comparison to a lot of other shinobi in the village. Shinobi is what they call themselves. They're fighters, warriors. And they're rather powerful. They're extremely talented in fire, which Naruto doesn't like. Fire is too aggressive for it. He likes peaceful, light, or darkness. Not fire or lightning. That's too basic. So, Naruto meets Itachi, who 
who's also walking around the village. At this point, he is, I believe, eight years old, since it was only a few days after the Uchiha massacre happened. And of course, the Uchiha's are suspected for the cause of the Nine Tails attack, which is why tensions have been rising inside the leaf village, and some Uchiha are even being discriminated because they are part of the Uchiha clan. So, a civil war is not out of question, in Naruto's head at least. Naruto wants to find out more about the internal conflict, which is why he purposely went further into the Uchiha clan's place. He talked to Itachi, who although just a kid, knows a lot of things about the politics inside the village and how shinobi think, especially from his own clan since he does talk to him, talk to them for quite a while, every day. And his father is the clan head, so he does have a say in what happens around the village. But this is where the video ends, with tension rising inside the leaf village. I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, join my discord, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!